China, it's truly a vast and fascinating country. 9,600,000 square kilometers of land, 3 million square kilometers of seas. And it's never still, changing with the rotation of the seasons. To fly like a bird is to see things that are beyond your imagination. You visit places you would never have dreamed of before. And even familiar places when you look down on them from on high will assume a completely different appearance. We'll take you to explore places close at hand and far away to witness nature and geography, humanity and history. Join us as we embark on a unique journey across the sky. Put 100 Beijings together and you have a land area equal in size to Xinjiang Weiga Autonomous Region, the largest province in China. To the south are the Kunlun Mountains, to the north the Altai Mountains and across the middle the Tian Shan Mountains. These three ranges surround two of the largest basins in China. In the Tian Shan Mountains, we'll explore the mystery of life nurtured by water. We'll get up close to Bogda Peak at a height of 5,000 meters, visit Heavenly Lake covered in ice and snow, and then head west into the largest grassland in Xinjiang. It's usually said that rivers, not mountains, are the source of civilization. However, it's a different matter if the mountains form a vast range, two and a half thousand kilometers long, crossing four countries. Xinjiang is located at the heart of the Eurasian continent, it's an arid region, yet thousands of glaciers in the Tian Shan Mountains serve as a gigantic solid reservoir containing massive quantities of water. The mountains are the source of 370 rivers and countless lakes. Water has determined the fate of this dry land. Tiangu Peak rises to over 4,500 meters. For mountaineers, it's a relatively easy climb. The greater challenge lies 135 kilometers away, Bogda Peak. Among all mountains rising 5,000 meters or more above sea level, Bogda is one of the most challenging for climbers. Here, climate and environmental changes, as well as human activity, have accelerated the retreat of the glaciers. The best way to appreciate the mountain's beauty is from a distance. After Bogdar Peak, Heavenly Lake comes into sight, set in the northern slope. Lying 1,900 meters above sea level, this alpine lake supplies the rivers downstream with meltwater from the Tian Shan Mountains. As we descend the slope, 
a picture of flourishing life is gradually unveiled. Approaching the midsection of the Tian Shan Mountains, a vast basin comes into view. It's an area of grassland, second in size only to the Hulin Bua grassland in China. On the flat grassland, a river's course can be changed by the slightest influence. The Kaidu River, formed by meltwater from the Tian Shan Mountains, has more than 10,000 bends along its 500 kilometer length. At sunset, if you happen to find the optimal spot, you can see as many as nine suns reflected in the water. Hidden away on the grassland is a swan nature reserve. Mating season has just passed. This year, 100 cygnets were born here. In a few months' time, the cygnets will learn to fly and they'll embark on their first migration before the arrival of winter. The Himalayas will be the first challenge they meet on the way. The northern foothills of the Tian Shan Mountains are a fertile area dotted with oases. Here, from Urumqi to Shuhudza, the land is a rich tapestry of color. In the canyons, we see how rivers can paint the earth. No other major city in the world is further from the ocean than Urumqi. The nearest sea is 2,000 kilometers away. However, it gets all the water it needs thanks to a glacier just a hundred kilometers away. For many years, this video footage of Urumqi's International Grand Bazaar has featured in CCTV's weather bulletins. popular local saying has it, you'll find all you want in the bazaar except a parent. In Xinjiang, nature proves its mastery at matching colors. In September, the cotton in Shurhudza takes center stage. Cotton is generally assumed to be white, yet the crop naturally occurs in many different colors. Brown is one of them. Cotton is the principal component of the Renminbi banknote. Schuhurz's cotton benefits from the area's plentiful sunshine. 9,000 trucks are needed to transport the annual crop.
Tomatoes are the new arrivals here. It's only in recent decades that they've been cultivated in Xinjiang. Tomatoes grow well where there's plenty of sunshine and major temperature fluctuations. Xinjiang enjoys 2,500 hours of sunshine a year and a difference between day and nighttime temperatures of up to 10 degrees. Tomatoes have found their ideal habitat in Xinjiang. Xinjiang is the world's third biggest processor of tomatoes after the US and Italy. It's the source of one out of every four bottles of ketchup. The peppers are laid out on the Gobi Desert to dry. The flaming hot earth generates a natural dehydration process. Not all these peppers will be eaten. Some will be made into a pigment that will be used to color lipstick. Further west along the northern slope of the Tian Shan Mountains, canyons become the most common feature of the landscape. Rivers originating on the snow-capped mountains pour down, cutting gorges into the rock. Seen from above, the Anji High Grand Canyon reveals the full range of its colors. The rivers wash and dissolve the sandstone and mudstone, leaving an abstract painting on the ground. On the next part of our journey, we'll visit the Ili River Valley. This vibrant garden will change your impression of Xinjiang as a place made harsh by drought. Vapor from the Atlantic moving north gathers at the edge of the basin. Even though it lies thousands of miles away, the Atlantic puts on a magical show in the Ely River Valley. The valley's westward-facing mouth benefits the most from the water vapor. The lushness is enhanced by the abundant rainfall and meltwater from the mountains. As April arrives, the apricot trees in the Ely River Valley seem eager to blossom. Most people associate apricot blossoms with Jiangnan, the area south of the Yangtze. Yet the flowers are more suited to a northern climate, as they can endure drought and cold. The apricots blossom only for a week, but in this brief time, they herald the arrival of spring in the valley. Beauty presents a different face in every gully in the Ely River Valley. The lavender comes into bloom in June. Until the 1960s, China had to import its lavender fragrance. Attempts were made by various provinces to grow it, and after six years, only Yi Li had succeeded. Nowadays, it's the source of 95% of lavender in China. West of the Ely River Valley lies a strange place. 
the mystery is revealed from above. The inspiration for this place comes from the Bagua, the eight diagrams. Seven decades ago, the magistrate of Turkes fitted 20 cows with plows. Starting from the center, they traced the first streets in Bagua town. The town today has eight main roads linked by four loop lines. CGTN shows you more, providing a fresh global voice you can trust. And a different look at the world you won't find anywhere else. We offer unparalleled coverage of Asia, Africa, and Latin America. We present diverse perspectives on news and newsmakers from around the world. We want to engage our viewers with stories that represent the complete picture. We want to share with you ideas that matter to us all. The stories, the people, the issues. A new and balanced perspective. CGTN, see the difference. China, a nation with the largest population on Earth, assuming a greater role economically and politically on the world stage. Understanding China is critical for all, though difficult for some. Behind the scenes of China's transformation, I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn. Join me to get closer to China. China, it's truly a vast and fascinating country. 9,600,000 square kilometers of land, 3 million square kilometers of seas. And it's never still, changing with the rotation of the seasons. To fly like a bird is to see things that are beyond your imagination. visit places you would never have dreamed of before. And even familiar places when you look down on them from on high will assume a completely different appearance. We'll take you to explore places close at hand and far away to witness nature and geography, humanity and history. Join us as we embark on a unique journey across the sky. The humans in the Ely River Valley need help with their hunting, especially in winter. It's a tradition among Kazakhs to train golden eagles to hunt. Golden eagles are among the fiercest birds of prey on the planet. Their vast two meter wingspan makes gliding easy. Golden eagles also have excellent vision, eight times sharper than any humans. And swooping at a speed of nearly 320 kilometers an hour, 
they make it virtually impossible for any prey to escape. The Sai Ram Lake to Guozhou Highway was Xinjiang's first major mountain road. It crosses many precipitous valleys, none deeper than Guozhou. This is the main route from Ili to northern Xinjiang. After the bridge, the next major landmark is Sai Ram Lake. Every year, as spring turns to summer, a cycle race takes place around the lake. The cyclists follow a beautiful route through the mountains until they reach Siram Lake. Siram Lake was created by movements of the Himalayas. As mountains rose, basins were created in the faults among them. With time, one of these basins filled with water to create Siram Lake. But no fish could survive here, only a few microorganisms. Eventually, people succeeded in raising cold water fish in the lake. The fish, in turn, attracted birds in search of food. Now, in the desolate desert of northern Xinjiang, we hear the call of the wild. It's a place of ghost cities sculpted by nature, alongside one miracle city built by human hand. We'll visit Kala Meili, catch up with a type of wild ass that can outrun wolves, and search for the last wild horse species on Earth. Several so-called ghost cities are found in Xinjiang. The strong winds that have blown here for centuries have eroded the rock formations to create various shapes. What is left is the unique landscape of Yadang. Sea Ghost City lies on the east shore of Jili Lake. Life is drawn here by the lake's water. Birds have made their home in the cliff caves. Three hundred kilometers further into the Jungar Basin, another ghost city comes into sight. With its lush scenery and water, this place once used to be a paradise for animals. Life that existed billions of years ago is now dark, sticky, and priceless petroleum. The extraction of the petroleum gave rise to a city in the Gobi Desert. Karame. Now we'll head eastward to the heart of the second largest desert in China. From high above, a network of golden leaf veins can be seen extending for over a dozen kilometers. Veins are actually sand ridges, many ten meters high and several kilometers long. Unlike most deserts that are made up of shifting sand, 
the southern Guaban Tungut mainly features faxed dunes. The curved sand ridges generally run from south to north. Seen from the sky, it's as if branches are extending over the brown earth. Kala Meili lies on the east side of the desert. From the outside, the city seems deathly quiet, but inside you'll discover its lively heart. Onagers are the most common animal here. When winter comes, they gather to form vast herds. One trusted onager will be the leader. In the event of danger, it will send a warning signal. When onagers flee, they maintain a formation behind their leader. Capable of speeds in excess of 60 kilometers an hour, they can even outrun a pack of wolves. You may think this is another herd of onagers. In fact, they're the only surviving wild horses on the planet. Przewalski horses have been living and breeding here for 60 million years. Their black foals are a key distinction between the Przewalski horses and the onagers. At one time, Przewalski horses disappeared from China, but 30 years ago, people here obtained 18 of them from abroad in exchange for several Qiang wild asses. With human help, the Przewalski horses have recovered their survival skills. From here, they go and live in the wilderness. In the Altai Mountains, we'll explore tales of man's interaction with nature. In the snow-covered mountains, we'll get a bird's-eye view of the legendary Kanas Lake that's believed to be home to monsters. We'll witness some extraordinary fishing skills on Ulungua Lake, and we'll follow the Kazakh herdsmen in their migration from one pasture to the next. Crossing the Junga Basin from south to north, we're heading towards Xinjiang's northernmost mountain range, the Altai Mountains. Here, we see the lowest snow line in China. Though just 3,000 meters above sea level, the area is covered in ice and snow all year round. The 150 meter deep number three pit at Kok Tokai is a treasure trove of rare metals. It's thanks to these rare metals that the Shenzhou spacecraft have been able to enter space. Altai in Mongolian means golden, hence golden mountains. Hundreds of years ago, as many as 50,000 gold prospectors would be operating in the mountains at any given time. But still, most people here were nomads and hunters. Ten thousand years ago, people used rough skis made of wooden boards wrapped in fur to track their prey over the snow. A 
ancient petroglyphs found here are a vivid record of the scene. There are evidence establishing the Altai region as one of the places where skiing originated. economic landscape, there is only we, an interconnected world of business, trade, and investment. Daily coverage told simply, with insight and new perspectives. Global business, we've got the world covered. A land full of natural resources and ingenuity where millions are embracing a vibrant middle class. Divided by politics, but united by hope. Latin America is changing rapidly. Witness the change on America's Now. China, it's truly a vast and fascinating country. 9,600,000 square kilometers of land, 3 million square kilometers of seas. And it's never still, changing with the rotation of the seasons. To fly like a bird is to see things that are beyond your imagination. visit places you would never have dreamed of before. And even familiar places when you look down on them from on high will assume a completely different appearance. We'll take you to explore places close at hand and far away to witness nature and geography, humanity and history. Join us as we embark on a unique journey across the sky. The dense forest here hides a quiet lake. Kalas Lake's deep underwater world remains largely a mystery. Numerous tales are told of people who have witnessed the lake's monster. It's said that horses drinking here have been dragged under the water. Tourists flock to Kanas Lake, hoping to see its monster. Most scientists think the lake monster is in fact a Hu Cho Taimen living deep underwater. A Hu Cho Taimen can be two meters long. These fierce and secretive creatures only surface occasionally, creating white ripples when they do so. Burul Toke County at the foot of the Altai Mountains is the largest natural fishery in northern Xinjiang. During May, when the fishing season is closed, pond smelt are all that may be caught here. These small creatures, which only live for a year, reproduce at a remarkably high rate.
In the evenings, while other fish stay in the deep water, the pond smelts swim to the shallows to spawn and feed. The experienced fishermen pinpoint their location. In letting down their nets, they're trying to avoid catching other species by mistake. Eventually, only pond smelt are left in the net. Summer is the busiest time of year in Burul Toke. In the distance, the sound of the Kazakh herdsman's horses can be faintly heard. As the seasons change, the herdsmen change their pasture. Carrying all their belongings with them, they're driving their cattle and goats to the summer pasture over 300 kilometers away. It's usually the women who lead the way with the food and other household items on the back of camels. Before dark sets in, they set up camp and light the fires. The men tend the livestock. These are the family's most valuable possessions. The herdsmen move from pasture to pasture according to the state of the grass's growth. In four or even more major migrations every year, they cover up to a thousand kilometers. It's said that Kazakh families move more often than any others. The best pasture can be found among the high mountains. Every year around June, the summer pasture in Xinjiang will feed 10 million head of livestock. Summer is the season when they grow fat. Before the arrival of winter, the herdsmen will take their animals downhill back to the warmer river valleys and lowlands. The herdsmen are always sensitive to the change of seasons. The shrink spruce grow deep in the Tian Shan Mountains. Each tree with its strong roots is like a small reservoir capable of holding two and a half tons of water. But the water evaporates very quickly. The rising vapor quickly forms a mist. The expanses of shrek spruce help create the humid climate and nourish the grassland. The world's currencies are more connected than ever before. The mechanisms that drive the economy are universal. Money moves markets. We explain these trends and show you how the cash in your pocket can have a wide-reaching effect. Because money makes the world go round. 
global business. From emerging powers to expanding partnerships, from fighting poverty to combating climate change, booming economies, war-ravaged nations, and everything in between. We capture the changes affecting the most dynamic and diverse continent on the planet, taking you beyond the headlines to the people and their stories. Asia Today, delivering Asia to the world. China, it's truly a vast and fascinating country. 9,600,000 square kilometers of land 3 million square kilometers of seas. And it's never still, changing with the rotation of the seasons. To fly like a bird is to see things that are beyond your imagination. visit places you would never have dreamed of before. And even familiar places when you look down on them from on high will assume a completely different appearance. We'll take you to explore places close at hand and far away to witness nature and geography, humanity and history. Join us as we embark on a unique journey across the sky. The Tarim Basin is home to the most treacherous desert in China, it's a place associated with stories of survival. Going along the Tarim River, we'll visit a species of tree that can fake death. Then we'll head east to Lop Nur to search for the lost ancient cities of the Silk Road. At the heart of the Tarim Basin is the largest desert in China. The desert is equivalent in size to Jiangsu, Zhejiang and Anhui provinces combined. In Uyghur, Taklamakan means you can get in, but you can't get out. In this extremely dangerous environment, 80% of the sand dunes are constantly shifting, blown by the wind. In the course of the past millennium, the desert has expanded by 100 kilometers southward. North of the desert, we continue along the Tarim River to its end. The Tarim is in fact China's longest inland river. Almost half of Xinjiang's population lives in its drainage area. In autumn, the desert poplar forest is one of the most spectacular scenes in Xinjiang. More than half of the desert poplar trees on Earth are found here. Their unique characteristic is that they grow towards water. Without sufficient water, they abandon their bodies above ground, allowing the roots underground to stay alive. A seemingly dried up desert poplar will sprout again once it finds a new water source.
Thus does life in the desert adapt to survive the arid conditions. Camels can live for a week in the desert without water. Their real water tanks are not their humps, but their body fluid systems. Its body fluids can provide an adult camel with at least 125 litres of water. In drought conditions, the goitred gazelle relies more on hard work than innate ability. In winter, they quench their thirst on snow, but summer involves a constant search for moisture-bearing plants. The aquamarine lake in Nopnur contains salt water. Drawn from underground reservoirs, it forms naturally crystallized salt. The saltwater lake covers only a small part of Lop Nua. A far greater area is the vast Gobi Desert. A bird's eye view of the area gives the impression of an outer planet. Lop Nua was once a huge lake fed by the Tarim River. But 60 years ago, it dried up after the Tarim River ran dry downstream. On the northwestern edge of Lopnur lie the ruins of Lowland City. Many official documents have been unearthed by this wall, leading experts to conclude that this may have been a government repository for official files. In ancient times, cities grew up along the Silk Road, with many taking their name from a nearby river. This ancient city was built on a willow leaf shaped ayat, a small island in a river bordered by two crossing rivers. Hence the name Jiaohe, which means river crossing city. A unique building method was employed here. By digging downward from the subsoil layer, they created streets, houses, and finally the whole city. River Crossing City is a quiet place. Our journey takes us over the ruins of many lost cities. Built beside rivers, they were places where merchant caravans traveling on the Silk Road would stop to replenish their supplies. Without these ancient cities, trade and even civilization would not have extended this far. On the next leg of our journey, we'll experience extremes of heat and cold. We'll start from the Turpan Basin, the lowest point in China, and we'll travel all the way up to the Pamir Plateau. In the southern foothills of the Tian Shan Mountains, we'll pass through the highest natural stone arch on Earth. And our final stop will be Kashgar, a city that borders four countries.
Chinese children become familiar with the flaming mountains at an early age as they feature in the classic Journey to the West. The mountains are famous for their heat. Here, the surface temperature can reach over 70 degrees Celsius. This giant thermometer shows the real-time temperature. The extreme heat is caused by the terrain. Lying at the lowest point in the Turpan Basin, there's a 5,000 meter difference in elevation compared with the surrounding mountains. The hot air cannot escape, causing the unusual heat. The flaming mountains are barren, yet the neighboring valley is richly covered in grapevines. It's said that the grapes from Turpan are the sweetest in China. The mature grapes are sent to drying houses to air dry. The holes in the wall afford ventilation without allowing direct sunlight to penetrate. In 40 days, the dry, hot wind will turn the fresh grapes into raisins. Grapes need plenty of water to grow. 2,000 years ago, people here invented the canat, an underground water supply system. To reduce the loss of water from evaporation, glacial meltwater was carried to the farmland and villages through a system of wells connected by underground channels. The combined length of the channels is thought to be over 5,000 kilometers. In this arid part of China, with the help of the Kanat, people created an agricultural miracle. We'll now travel 1,300 kilometers from Turpan to the far west of China and the Pamir Plateau. Here, the extreme minus 50 degrees Celsius temperature has frozen 2.4 trillion tons of water to form glaciers. In Weiga, Muztag Atta means father of glaciers. Its vast ice sheet contains as much water as 280 heavenly lakes. Considering its 7,500 meter height, it's relatively easy to climb. After a successful ascent, climbers can ski downhill to celebrate their triumph. Shipton's Arch stands at a height of 3,000 meters. Its Chinese name, Tianmen, literally means Gate of Heaven. It was formed by wind eroding the rock. In 1947, this arch was discovered by a British explorer. He made three attempts to climb to its top, but never made it. Finally, in the year 2000, 
an American expedition reached the apex, and from there, they were able to measure the arch's height. At 457 meters, it's the tallest natural stone arch on Earth. Now we'll bid farewell to the mountains and head to a populous oasis where Kashgar awaits us. Kashgar was a key link between the northern and southern routes of the Silk Road. The traditional businesses still survive in today's bazaar. Kashgar hosts various bazaars. On Sundays, it's the turn of the cattle and sheep. This traditional business has made Kashgar what it is today. Kashgar grew up centered on Etagar Mosque. More than 2,000 people come to worship here every day. This number will swell by many thousands during Korban festival. A diverse cultural mix has given rise to the unique architecture of Kashgar ancient town. These old buildings standing close together form a haphazard maze of narrow alleys and streets. China's east coast connects the country with the world outside. And its western region shares a border with several other countries. In ancient times, the Silk Road carried China's products and its people's dreams to faraway lands. Today, Xinjiang is at the heart of the new Silk Road, which will connect China with its western neighbors more closely than ever before.